Yeah, you know, this is uh, this is not your your uh, father's uh, AI workload or, or infrastructure workload that they have. Uh, it requires a, a fully different, as Don alluded to, different setup in the data center, different amounts of power. Uh, but the workload itself really is you kind of consider what folks are trying to accomplish. So they start with a use case. They have some data that they use to point to, and then they use a training model within AI to be able to go and train it. And that training model requires a lot of compute power. But once they can move to inferencing, which means that they're actually processing on a, a, a more long level and, and it's, it's actually what they're doing from the time they train it through the rest of its lifespan is inferencing, that requires a slightly uh, less powerful infrastructure and you can do it in a variety of ways, uh, maybe even using different types of infrastructure for it uh, that allows it to be able to run and, and not require that power. So uh, it is very different. Um, in, in some way, AI workloads are created equal and in many other ways, they're not, um, they're all, they're all pushing the, li they're, they're equal in the sense that they are pushing the limits of what is capable in the industry at the moment, whether that's, uh, leaning on, uh, what we're, uh, what the, what the compute engine is the, in, in uh, quite often. NVIDIA GPUs, uh, the networking infrastructure that is going by that. There are a lot of very similar considerations between organizations. The love, you know, the latency, the bandwidth that happens on the network side, uh, and on the storage side, you know, uh, in making sure that the right data is in the right place at the right time. Yeah, I would say that you know, the depending upon what they're trying to accomplish and the sensitivity of that data, certainly you have to consider that and. You know, that's truly something that as we're looking and working with some of the early adopters, uh, they do not want this data to be uh, any place other than an on-prem environment or a private environment. And so I, I think that as we continue to progress and more use cases uh, are released and they have less sensitivity about that data, you're going to see other areas, maybe the cloud or other places that'll go. Uh, well, the use case will depend on how quickly they want that information in many cases. So, um, you know, the it, what we're seeing in, in for example, finance, uh, or we're seeing in healthcare, uh, those are the really the early adopters that we're seeing life sciences uh, are doing that as well as some of the retail. And so that proximity and speed to that information, depending upon how quickly they want to get it, uh, let's just say it's fraud protection uh, that they might be using within a financial institution.